How was the Taj Mahal made? Have you or a loved one ever been to India? If so, chances are you or they took out some time to visit the city of Agra. Why there, I hear you asking? Well, because it's home to one of the most famous monuments on the planet, one of the seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal. For the global attention and millions of tourists it attracts, the Taj Mahal is renowned as an image that represents India itself, as well as a symbol of love, wealth, and power. Today, join us as we delve into the era of the Mughal Empire and the tragic tale of why such a massive and beautiful monument came to be. So, stick around to find out. History Our story begins in the Mughal Empire of the 17th century, a long dynasty of wealthy and influential rulers under whom India prospered greatly. The Mughals accomplished many great feats, and one of them was their massive contribution to the field of art, literature, science, and, you guessed it, architecture. These contributions to architecture peaked in the era of the fifth Mughal emperor, Shah Jahan, which translates to King of the World. He reigned from 1628 to 1658, and it was under his emperorship that the Mughal Empire reached the height of its architectural achievements and cultural glory. The third son of the previous Mughal emperor, Shah Jahan, ascended to the throne when his father passed in 1627. He was an ambitious man and had big plans to make improvements to his domain. Shah Jahan was a major patron of the architectural arts in particular. He pioneered many construction projects, such as the Red Fort, or Delhi Fort, large sections of Agra Fort, where he made his claim to the throne, the Jama Masjid, the Wazir Khan Mosque, the Shalimar Gardens, and even the Peacock Throne made to celebrate his rule. Mumtaz Mahal Now, let's talk about the woman who this entire story revolves around. Shah Jahan's most beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, Persian for the Chosen One of the Palace. Married to her as a prince when he was still 20, Shah Jahan's relationship with his wife was a happy and loving one. He was a devoted husband, and she, a loving wife. They had 14 children together, out of whom seven survived into adulthood. Later, when Shah Jahan took the throne, his wife Mumtaz was made empress and given immense power, such as issuing her own orders, attending the state council, and reviewing official documents with the imperial seal. Also, if you find yourself glued to the screen in interest right now, consider subscribing to us so you can get more videos just like this one. Or, better yet, press the bell icon to get notifications and ensure you never miss a single upload. The power given to Mumtaz Mahal is a testament to the love Shah Jahan had for his dear wife, which makes it all the more tragic and unfortunate that at the age of 38 in 1631, Mumtaz Mahal died upon giving birth to her 14th child. This untimely passing all but broke Shah Jahan, and contemporary historians noted him as being paralyzed by grief and weeping fits. His personality was profoundly impacted by her death, and they say he was never the same since then. He avoided royal affairs for a week, gave up listening to music, and even dressing lavishly for two years. Construction begins. It was then that Shah Jahan vowed to construct his most ambitious architectural project yet, a masterpiece of construction that would eclipse all of his previous works, his magnum opus, fit to entomb his beloved wife. It could only be the immense love he had for Mumtaz that could drive a man to envision such a massive project. He commissioned it the same year as her passing, at a piece of land on the south side of Agra, which had captured Shah Jahan for its beauty. This location was also chosen for its central location in the Mughal Empire, and the beautiful view it had to the Yamuna River. Ustad Ahmad Lahori was appointed as the main architect. He, along with other skilled masterminds of construction, were put in charge of designing the Taj Mahal. The design they came up with incorporated and expanded on design traditions of Indo-Islamic and earlier Mughal architectures. Some specific pieces of inspiration were the Guri Amir, the Tomb of Timur, Humayun's tomb, Itmarud Dallah's tomb, and even Shah Jahan's own Jama Masjid in Delhi. As for construction materials, much deliberation was made on that front too. Although most Mughal structures before this were built primarily from red sandstone, for the Taj Mahal, Shah Jahan chose high-quality white marble, specifically known as Makrana marble. It is renowned for its pristine white color, which allowed for intricate detailing, and its durability, which made it an excellent choice for a monument of such significance, and would ensure that the Taj Mahal withstood the test of time. The Taj Mahal also features some exquisite inlay work. 
the finest among all Mughal landmarks, where artisans embedded precious and semi-precious stones into the marble. The meticulous craftsmanship added a level of grandeur and detail that had never before been seen in a piece of architecture at the time. The gemstones used include lapis lazuli, turquoise, and jade, chosen for their aesthetic appeal just as much as their symbolic significance. Construction process. The construction of the Taj Mahal was a long and arduous process that lasted 21 whole years. It all started with the foundation, which was laid with deep wells filled with rubble, iron, and mortar to ensure stability in the soft ground of the Yamuna River Basin. Trees were immediately planted to let them mature over the course of construction. The plinth, or raised platform upon which the Taj Mahal would sit, was a crucial element of the construction. It provided a strong, sturdy base for the structure, supporting its massive weight and protecting it from any potential damage. The main mausoleum that housed the tomb of Mumtaz Mahal was constructed in stages. The basic structure was built first, followed by intricate detailing and decoration. The Taj Mahal also features an iconic dome, which was a feat of engineering at the time. Its design and construction involved complex geometric principles to ensure stability and grandeur. Then, there were the minarets and mosques surrounding the main structure. The four minarets that flanked the Taj Mahal were not only decorative, as some might think, they also served an important structural purpose and helped to provide balance and stability to the entire building. The two red sandstone mosques that flank either side of the building served not only as places of worship, but were also designed to complement the main structure and contribute to the overall symmetry of the entire complex. Calligraphy played a major role in the design of the Taj Mahal, with Quranic verses being intricately inscribed all over the building, emphasizing the Mughal commitment to their faith. It not only added a layer of spiritual significance to the building, but also contributed greatly to the overall beauty. The elegant writing became an integral part of its artistic charm. Another key aspect of the Taj Mahal is the garden it is surrounded by, known as a charbog, or four-part garden. This layout is inspired by Persian garden designs, and it symbolizes the Islamic representation of paradise, which is described in texts as a garden filled with abundant trees, flowers, and plants, where four rivers source at a central spring. Similarly, the charbog was built to feature four squared sections, divided by narrow canals of water. Each element of the garden carries symbolism and adds meaning to the overall design of the Taj Mahal. The architects did come across a few challenges during the construction, one such environmental challenge was the impact of the nearby Yamuna River. The river's floods and changing course could have affected the stability of the structure. Another problem was labor, as the project needed a massive and diverse workforce to complete, all of whom faced harsh working conditions such as long hours and exposure to harsh weather. A project of this scale would not have been easy to realize. After construction, after over two decades of work, the Taj Mahal was finally completed in 1653 in an inauguration ceremony that symbolized the fulfillment of Shah Jahan's promise to immortalize his love for his beloved wife. Since then, the structure still stands tall today. Although the pure white marble has discolored to a yellowish tint in today's age due to pollution and acid rain, it doesn't take away from the monument's beauty and significance the Taj Mahal consistently ranks among the most visited landmarks globally. Its cultural impact extends beyond architecture, inspiring art, literature, and popular culture alike. It has also been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1983. So, there you have it. That was the story of how an emperor's undying love for his wife led to one of the most spectacular monuments in history, serving a dual role as a symbol of love and as an architectural cornerstone that went on to influence the architecture of many projects since. Hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching.